I Am Angus is brought to you by the Igenity Profile for Angus. Learn more at Igenity.com. I'm probably not what your viewers are expecting in an interview because I grew up in New York City and uh, I was 26 years old before I came out here. And uh, when I got here, I didn't know the difference between hay and straw, uh, foals and ponies, um, just classic. But I did have an interest in agriculture, going back to the time I was a little kid. And I also had an interest in, uh, in animals. As a philosophy professor, I taught history of philosophy from ancient pre-Socratics all the way up to about 1900. It worried me uh, that nobody had ever talked about whether we have any moral obligations to animals, you know, beyond that of good husbandry. And so I started to kind of think on that subject. And then uh, in 76, I got asked by the vet school to start a course for their kids because there were some faculty members in vet school that, that sensed, they couldn't prove it, but they sensed that the society was changing very, very dramatically in the direction of pro-animal sentiment. What struck me one day, I literally had to sit down because it was such a revelation, thinking about the 23rd Psalm. People think about it as being about, you know, God's connection with people. Lord is my shepherd. But it suddenly occurred to me that it's about agriculture, that the psalmist could not come up with a better metaphor for God's ideal relationship to people than what the shepherd provides the sheep. Now I've been told by a dean in New Zealand that animal husbandry, the word husband, comes from whose bond, bonded to your household that the notion was the animals are part of your, your household. And from that flows what you find in, in the 23rd Psalm, the obligation to care for them. A lot of my ranch kids tell me that the only time they ever got yelled at by their father or was when they went to a dance or a football game or something without caring for the animals first. I go into these little tiny communities, ranch communities, and I start the sentence, we take care of the animals, and they echo back, and they take care of us. And that's what has been called the ancient contract. When we domesticate an animal, we would provide them with medical attention, protection from predators, food during famine, water during drought, uh, putting them into an optimal environment where they could actualize their biological natures and help them. And that's one reason I've come to have so much affection for ranch people. To me, the only substantial group of people left who really, in their hearts, believe in animal husbandry are Western ranchers. The people who produce beef in the American West, obviously not all of them, but the vast majority, take pride in what they do, they take pride in their stewardship of the land and the animals, right? And um, they're independent as hell, which is why it's difficult to penetrate. But that's all right. I mean, Americans are independent as hell. And we, we were uh, evolved as, as Americans to speak our mind, and that's under threat now with political correctness and all that kind of stuff. And we worry about who we offend. I have students all the time. Well, you offended me in your lecture. I said, good, then you're being educated, you know? And so I have, by a process I, I wasn't exactly aware of, I've become as concerned for the future of ranchers as I am for the, for the treatment of their animals. So I would like to do my little bit to try to stem the tide. And I hope I've been somewhat successful. <laughs>